Now I've gotten a ton of questions on how I set up my flashcards over the past, you know, five plus years. Starting manually because I was a caveman and then going into SRS and using uh, specifically Memrise. Although Anki was sprinkled in there as well. And you know what? I tried the gamut of everything that everyone told me in every Reddit thread. And a lot of it was just kind of meh. It didn't really do much. But some of it was really, really good and I kind of held to the good. So if you want to see how I set it up, stay tuned. Let's check out how I set up my flashcards. <laughs> On, everybody my name is Chad yes that that Chad there's only one of us and this week we're talking about my flashcards frankly now I've done one video about this before I don't know some two years ago I told everyone that I was using memorize which for some reason was a controversial opinion back then not for any other reason than it's what I started with and I already had like 6,000 words at the time it's just too much to export to Anki there's no like reason I ignored Anki in choosing this. But there's plenty of you guys that do use Memrise or use some other, I don't know, SRS system that I don't even know about because there's just a billion of them right now. And if you're not using them, you should. That's a whole different video. So for the complete beginner, the novice, maybe you're looking to use Memrise or kind of switch, or maybe you're just interested in how I set up my cards regardless of the format, this is your lucky day. Now you guys might be wondering why my arm's kind of stuck up here and I haven't moved, and that's because my computer's here. Desktop view! Yeah, similar to last week. Uh, it's very hot, so I don't want you guys to see how sweaty I am in this tiny little corner view. It's also, uh, if I'm gonna show you a virtual flashcard system, I kind of need the internet. So we're gonna go back to my desktop view this week, and we're gonna go over how, frankly, I use Memrise uh, if you're not familiar, Memrise is just another SRS system, although they do have some of their own courses. See here, I have about 13,387 words learned over, I don't, I don't even know how many freaking decks I have. Too many that they don't even load all of them. So that's okay. But if you guys are new like me, you want to start this up, you want to come up yonder way and hit courses. Uh, Memrise has a bunch of their own courses, which is fine. If you also don't want to set up your cards and you want to use Memrise, they have community decks for most of the major textbooks. So last time I checked, they definitely had the Genki series, the Mina series, uh, Tolvira. It's a pretty decent sized community, probably not as big as the Anki community, but it's out there and it does look nice, which I guess has a little bit of a benefit. But we're going to come up here to create a course. We're going to call it Chad's Toe. Uh, fung fungus. Yeah. We are teaching. If you hit the J on your keyboard, you'll go down to Japanese for English speakers. To be honest, I just usually go, you can see I just hit D through most of these. You have to put something, uh, but I can't imagine any of this is helpful except for subscribe for sucky, sucky, good time. That's essential. You guys should subscribe for that. Ten dollar make ya holla. Uh, we can create this course. Now, there's a lot you can actually do with these. You can change the pictures, you can edit how many words a day you want to do. I just want to show you guys how I set up my deck. So, first thing, come down here and hit add a level. I typically have at least two levels, unless I'm doing something in a textbook and I might do it by chapter. Uh, and then there's two ways you want to call this. So, I would normally write this in Japanese, but even for the beginners, it might be helpful to write this in English. So, what I typically have is two levels. I have a meaning level and a reading level. Now, why is this important? Well, every time I tried to just do the kanji meaning, like I would try and have the kanji and then say in English what the word means, especially the lower levels when you're not doing monolingual learning yet. I never learn kanji that way. It's the same way that textbooks try and teach you kanji. It's kind of BS. I hated it. So this is how I overcame that and made kanji really connect. So you'll see on both these decks, they have this little under section here with this kind of giant, uh, I don't know what this is, pencil. It says test on kana prompt with English. That's the kind of default setting for both of these. So if you're a newbie, you're a novice, you're a beginner, you're, you're not just exposed to enough Japanese yet to be able to kind of tell uh, kanji readings apart a little bit, you might want to start here. So you're going to click on this little icon. It says test on kana prompt with English. Keep that exactly the same. You're going to be basically learning the meaning of the word let's say cat, and then you're getting prompt with English and you're testing on the kana, which should be neko, neko, right? Just the kana, we're not worrying about the kanji yet. Uh, if you're a bit more advanced, my suggestion would be switch this to kanji. Once this is set on kanji, it'll give you only the kanji and just by reading the kanji, you have to be able to go, oh, that means neko, so that must then mean cat. And then if you're if you're super baller and you really, you really know what you're doing, you're gonna wanna test on kanji prompt with Kana. That's kind of the, the final stage, but because I'm expecting this to be for beginners, we'll start here. Finally, on the reading section, this is the part where your vocabulary knowledge meets your kanji learning. So you're just going to simply click the little same icon for the reading area, and you're going to change this to testing on kanji prompting with Kana. So the reason you do this is so that way it'll show you kanji of the word, let's say neko, 
and then the options below, it'll only give you the reading of it. So the reading will be in kana, neko, or I don't know, natto, or some, some other form of kana that's down there. And that's how I actually connect my understanding of what the word means with the kanji that I'm learning. I actually separate the steps in order to do that. So let's add one in here. Uh, I'm just gonna switch over to my Japanese keyboard. Let's try shinse. So like application, right? That's a, a pretty basic word for that, shinse. And make sure in the kana you put in there. So it actually has to be kana. And then you have the English definition, application. Sure, cool, whatever. We will add that word there. And if you are unfamiliar with the kanji, you're still learning the kanji, you will encounter thousands of words once you really get going in kanji that you know the kanji super well. It's very obvious what kanji that word is using. But if you're still in the beginner state and you're unfamiliar with the kanji, you're gonna then enter it down here. And you can see it already pulls it up, application, because we just put it in. Boom, that's how you put those words in. Now, just on a quick side note, uh, you can do this. I have done this with textbooks. I've done this with just my real life, like I learn a new word from reading a book or just walking around Japan and I'll save it on my phone so I could enter it later. Uh, or these guys, right? Word lists, if you're doing the JLPT thing. It's gonna help you to have access to some sort of definition, be it monolingual or bilingual, that is completely up to you. I don't care. I didn't start doing monolingual. I, I worked into doing monolingual uh, definitions. So start wherever you are. There's no pressure to, to jump and like either hang yourself or drown, right? Not with me. The big reason to have a dictionary uh, is not actually to get the singular word definition. I mean, you can have like Rikai Kun or Chan or whichever one, it depends on if you're Mac or PC. Uh, to get those, like you can, I could turn mine on, you can scroll over the word with that and see what it means, whether it's a noun or whatever. Uh, that's not what I mean. I want you guys to get it in a sentence somewhere. And the reason is, uh, I guess we'll just move on now so I could show you. But once you've imported it here, you can also add uh, audio, you can record your own file or upload a file. Books like this is the N1 Tango series. It comes with free audio for all these words. A lot of textbooks have CDs and stuff for specifically this. But we're gonna hit save and continue just so I can show you real quick how this works. So I'll come into the meaning section. Uh, and the nice thing about this, this also has a free app, right? So you can do it on your phone, you can do it on here. You can study it when you're out and about, you can study it when you're at home, on a tablet. It's just pretty convenient where I believe the Anki app actually costs like $10. So that's, I, rem I remember that was one of the main reasons why I started with this rather than that. But you're just gonna come in here and hit learn these words. And it's gonna start us on a session. I don't think you guys need to see me go over these words. I think you guys can understand how to do that. But the big thing here is it's got the kana, the English and the kanji and it says help me remember this. I always click this button and there's a couple things you could do here. You can upload the audio file from earlier like we said. You can also upload a picture. Maybe you have a mnemonic and I always add two things minimum to this but this is really customizable. So the very first thing that I do, let's just run over to a dictionary app and type in our word. We're gonna sentence search for this uh, let's just go with the second one, right? She applied for a visa. So I'll copy this and I'll come back into here and paste it. Although it does want uh, the, f the, not the stuff that I want there. So, so we have the sentence. If you want, you can also add the English. I, again, it depends on your comfortability. If you're comfortable going into monolingual and only doing this that way, awesome. Uh, if you're far enough ahead, I never add the English now. I can read that very, very easily. So I just want a sentence to show how I actually use this in a sentence. And even better, you can take this and make it bold or italic by adding those sections. Boop, 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 boop. There, that will make it bold so I can see it in the sentence. You can see up here it actually, it added the thing that we need. Uh, and it shows you how it's used. That might seem small, but the reason I, I say all this and why I use all this is because it is really hard hard some of the time to know how a word is used if you're only given the definition of application because in Japanese it's different for like to apply for a job or to like apply a bandage that's atteru right a lot of these are different words in English they're the same but in Japanese they're different so I'll give you guys an example if you have the word bobcat in English right I'm sure you guys have a word that came to your head to go bobcat am I talking about the weird strange cat in the woods the wild animal or am I talking about a heavy piece of equipment? It depends on the context, right? There is a different context for that word. Japanese has different contexts where the word means something different. It might be the exact same word, uh, but it means something different in different contexts. And you kind of need to know how to use it in those contexts. There might even be a word where, yes, it does mean to apply something, but it's just not used in that context. Like I said, uh, 
when you're applying a diaper. That's not Shinse. If you use this for like, I'm applying the this wound to you, you're gonna sound freaking weird because it's a different use of this word. So let's say you're at the level, you want this to be in English, right? And you could even do it like this, where you can see where it correlates by just adding there. So you can see where it applies. The other thing, I've added pitch accent charts to this for words. I don't do that now as much, but you definitely can do that. The other thing I like to do is I like to have a mnemonic, uh, especially at the beginning. You tend to need mnemonics less the farther you go. Uh, I don't use them a tremendous amount now unless the word is really weird and wonky for me, but it might be something good for you guys to know. Just to give you guys an example, there's it really should be a video on its own about mnemonics, but let's just uh, shin se. Shin se. I like to break it into parts. Sheen, Char Charlie Sheen, okay, I don't know if I'm spelling his name right, so we have Charlie Sheen, he's the guy that, uh, that we're basing this on, Sheen, say, and has to do with application, like applying for a job, right, that type of application, um, or applied for a visa, Charlie Sheen, said, I know it's a bit of a stretch, Sheen, say, and Sh Charlie Sheen said, you could say say, I guess it's incorrect English, says, maybe he's foreign, Charlie Sheen says, he applied for the visa. So there, now you have a mnemonic. Charlie Sheen says he applied for the visa. Sheen say. Do you see how that works? So we can save that. Now you have that mnemonic in your head when you're learning this word. And it, you can do this for two words a day, five words, ten words, or me at my worst was 20 words a day. But this is the very basic of how I did this. Now again, you guys could sentence mine and make the, the answers and the questions whole sentences, so you have the context is the question. You can add pitch accent, you can add like pictures of Charlie Sheen like writing a piece of paper to help you remember this word. If you also want to learn about pitch or maybe just accent in general, you can add audio to this from a native, especially if you buy a book that has that. In general, this is how I make it, this is how I run things. Look, let's go back to big Oh, I'm sweaty. I'm so sorry. Let's go back to big camera. I'll try and finish soon so I don't sweat through the screen, I, I promise. But yeah, this is my general process and it works great for me. Uh, this is the best parts of all the vast things that I've tried to help me understand words and kanji and their practice. I just wanted to make something quick for you guys. So maybe if you've never done this before, or maybe you want to see how I do it, or if you're trying something and it's not working for you, don't be afraid to try something else. Just because it worked for someone doesn't mean it'll work for you. And just because this worked for me doesn't mean it'll work for you too. But if you're looking for something new, maybe try this for a bit. Give it about two, three weeks. If this seems to really help you, freaking awesome. Go for it. Keep going. I just want to encourage you guys to just be fearless and try things and be willing to fail. Because that's how I learned all of this. This was not just, I read some forum and had these on there and I've done this for five years. There was a lot of trial and error in finding what really worked for me and my study style and my brain a noodle bit. Uh, hopefully this helps. If it does, please leave a comment down below. Tell me uh, what method do you use? Do you use Memorizer Anki? That's the one I'm probably the most curious about. And if you do, how do you set up your cards? If you're new, if you're a novice, a beginner, please check the comments. See the, the just the breadth, the, the thickness of history of all these people below that have been studying Japanese and are sharing their experiences and maybe try some of their tips. They might know something I don't, so go down there, check them out. They're basically just as knowledgeable as I am, as far as I'm concerned. We're all in this journey together. So there's no reason that uh, everyone's voices can't be heard here. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. It would mean so much to me. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments, you can leave them all in the comment box down below. I do personally read all of them. You can check me out uh, at That's My Chad on Twitter, Chad Zimmerman on basically all other platforms, including Twitch. Thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are the best. If you guys want to get custom books from Japan, manga, hardcover copies, not hardcover, they're all softcover, but if you would like manga, fresh from the shelves of Japan, shipped to your front door, check out my Patreon link down below. I have a tier called Manga Club where you'll get, for less than a dollar a day, you'll get four copies of Japanese manga shipped to your front door every single month, and it supports everything that I do here. See this nice camera, all this nice lighting? This ain't free. So thank you to the patrons. I appreciate you guys. Check out Zimkar Rod Company. It's the summer, guys. Go out and fish. I have Japanese fly rods, traditional Japanese fly rods for as low as $60 US. I import these. Me and my dad run this business. It would mean a lot to us if you check that out. Links in the description down below. And finally, if you guys wouldn't mind, I'm 100 subs away from 17,000. That blows my mind. So if you're not subscribed and you would like to be a part of making my week be really happy and full of good feelings, 
uh, consider subscribing, at least to give me the screenshot, because that means a lot to me. Other than that, thank you so much to all my non-subscribers, all my subscribers. I will see you in the subscriber-only outro, which you can only see if you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, you have to end the video at the outro. All right, love hard, love deep, and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.